And whenever I visit work sites in Houston, in Florida, and in other places or around the United States and in Japan, I learn a lot from them. And each time I learn a lot and I really appreciate their hard work and their dedications. So when uh, I go to space, uh, I will go to space with many people in my thoughts. Uh, tell us, if you would, um, kind of in, in a synopsis fashion, mm -hmm. what the key objectives are for mm -hmm. STS-131. Mm -hmm. The main objectives of the STS-131 are to deliver the Leonardo multipurpose logistics module to the International Space Station and to supply all the science experiments, equipment, and the critical spare parts to the International Space Station. Okay. Uh, and as a mission specialist on this flight, tell us what um, some of your primary mm -hmm. responsibilities are. Yes. I am the load master on this SDS-131 flight. Uh, it is like uh, orchestrating all the transfer activities more than 120 hours. And also I will operate the space shuttle robotics arm uh, to inspect the space shuttle or thermal tiles which may have damaged from ascent. And also Stephanie and I will operate uh, the station robotic arm to birth and unburse multipurpose logistics module to and from the International Space Station. As the load master, mm -hmm. um, what challenges do you anticipate mm -hmm. there will be for you in, in, in orchestrating this massive amount of transfer that you have to do back and forth between the MPLM and, and the space station? What challenges do you think you'll face? Yes, exactly. Uh, Loadmaster seems to be a challenging job. Uh, I'm the loadmaster on SDS-131 uh, with Stephanie Wilson's help. And we will deliver more than six tons of supplies to the International Space Station. And we'll bring unnecessary equipment to the Earth. So the total the transfer activities will take about 100, more than 120 hours. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is very challenging to orchestrate all the activities in order. Some hardware has constraints, so some hardware needs to be transferred in a certain order and in a certain way. So I need to understand the hardware very well. So it is a challenging part. It's like uh, uh, moving, to, uh, moving into a new house. Some items need to be treated very carefully and some items need to, to be uh, transferred in a certain order. So it's just like um, moving uh, to, into a new house. And I believe it will go well with all my great crew members' help. Tell us what level of involvement the station crew mm -hmm. will, will have uh, in the docked operations mm -hmm. uh, during the mission and how critical mm -hmm. their involvement is to the success of the mission. Mm -hmm. The station crew plays a very critical role on each shuttle mission. They will prepare uh, all the tools we need beforehand and help us work comfortably on the ISS. So without their help, the mission would not be successful. And I'm looking forward to working with each of the station crew members on board. Um, the day after you make it to orbit, uh, the crew is uh, scheduled to do a limited inspection of the shuttle's exterior. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about that process and the role you'll play mm -hmm. um, in that activity. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the space shuttle's inspection is a teamwork. Uh, most of our crew members will participate in the inspection activities. and. Jim Dadden, uh, Dottie, Metcalf Lindenberger, and I uh, will take turns to inspect each part of the space shuttle's port side wing and starboard side wing and the nose cap with the help of Stephanie and Dex. And, you know, the responsible person will make sure the robotic arm uh, is maneuvering uh, as planned.
and also make sure all the clearances to the structure are maintained. And supporting person will help the camera views, adjusting the camera views, and follow the procedures, and to make sure each step is conducted in order. So it's a very big teamwork. Then the following day, at some mm -hmm. point, um, the shuttle crew will have the station in mm -hmm. its sights, and you'll start closing the gap between the right. two spa spacecraft. Tell us uh, about what you're scheduled to do for the rendezvous and docking mm -hmm. phases of the flight. Yes. I will operate uh, the space shuttle's docking mechanism with Daddy Metcalf Lindenberger. So once the space shuttle reaches the space station, we will uh, operate the docking systems using some switches and monitors uh, its telemetries and uh, make sure these two vehicles are secure to each other. Uh, and then um, after uh, the, the spacecraft have docked, mm -hmm. you'll open the hatches and go yes. inside, say hi and get acclimated. What else are you scheduled to do for that day that mm -hmm. you dock once you, once you make it into the station? After uh, the space shuttle docks to the International Space Station and we open the hatch between these two vehicles. Uh, Stephanie and I will operate the space station's robotic arm. And probably in a cupola uh, robotic workstation, which is delivered in uh, 28 SDS 130 mission. So we are looking forward to using the cupola robotic workstation it will be very fantastic because it has lots of window views. Mm -hmm. And we will operate the space station robotic arm to grapple the OBSS, the boom to inspect the space shuttle's thermal tiles. Uh, because we have to maintain uh, the clearances between uh, the MPLM logistics module to the OBSS boom. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will grapple and retrieve the OBSS with station arm, then hand it over to the space shuttle robotic arm. And to make it easy uh, to unburst the MPLM logistic module from the payload bay. Okay. Uh, and then uh, tell us about how um, the MPLM will then be unburthed and uh, mm -hmm. tell us uh, when that's scheduled to happen. Yes, it's going to be on flight day four, and Stephanie and I will again operate uh, the space station robotic arm to retrieve MPLM into the payload bay, and Stephanie will uh, retrieve the MPLM and unburst it, and I will fly the station arm from the low hover position to the International Space Station docking mechanism. It's going to be a mixture of the automatic uh, program mode and also the manual mode using the hand controllers. So we've been training, uh, we've been trained a lot together to make sure uh, it's going to be successful. Okay. Um, during the first EVA, uh, while Rick Mastracchio and Clay Anderson are outside, uh, and everyone else is busy doing intravehicular mm -hmm. stuff inside. Mm -hmm. You'll you'll be busy starting mm -hmm. your transfers. What what's the what items will you will you get to first? Are there items that need to to, to go before others? Or how does the plan work for transfer on on, mm -hmm. on that day? Yes, uh, the transfer activities on EVA days are challenging because uh, we cannot transfer huge items because it interferes with EVAs and robotics arm operations. So we determine specific order of the transfer on the EVA days. And so we need to understand uh, each constraints and each order of the transfer activities on EVA days especially. Okay. And are there, are there any items that, mm -hmm. that day that, that uh, again need to go? For, would, what, what items should we expect to see transferred that day? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, some items need to be retrieved before EVA because uh, Rick and Clay will need these items for EVAs. And on flight day five during EVA one, uh, we will transfer some